and uh, hello 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 so welcome to here for the third talk uh, is a tutorial or is a lecture i decided it's not a tutorial uh, i postponed the tutorial for the next week okay that's if, if that's all right if that's possible please okay that's fine that's fine Okay, so please. Continue. It is not very. It 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 uh, comes to reinforce what I was telling yes uh, last time. So it's uh, not quite a lecture, but not if not, not a tutorial. It's in the middle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please continue. Uh, share the screen. Yeah. Sure. Can you see the screen? Yeah. So uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm happy to to talk uh, here again at the third lecture. Um, so this lecture, the goal of this lecture is to understand uh, more more precisely what is the toric locus of a reaction network. I mentioned it last uh, lecture, but now we can see uh, more rigorously. Because last time I had the goal to present a general uh, point of view of the whole uh, of, of my plan, but today it's uh, more detailed. So uh, the references uh, we are going to focus on today are uh, here mentioned, some of them, most of the references. So we have uh, a book by Martin Feinberg, Foundations of Chemical Reaction Network Theory from 2019. Uh, there are also lectures on chemical reaction networks by Martin Feinberg, so you can find them online. Uh, moreover, um, a big part of this talk is uh, uh, in the terminology or uh, preserving the notations from this book by Cox, by David Cox, Applications of Polynomial Systems. And uh, since historic dynamical systems uh, appeared were coined by this paper by the authors of this paper of course uh, I, I also use the reference number four by Krachun, Dickenstein, Xiu and Sturmfels. And the uh, further references therein you can uh, of course uh, th th this is not uh, exhaustive and uh, you you find more references uh, there in these papers and books. So uh, I want to give, um, using this example, to give some notations that we need in order to understand the toric locus, how to compute it. So I, I give an example of a reaction network. So uh, as I said last time, uh, it, the reaction networks are directed graphs. And here we have this network. Again, we can um, consider there are three complexes and these are uh, the vertices, and we have um, four species, x1, x2, x3, x4. And now the edges of this graph are reactions. So we have four reactions. And uh, the goal of, uh, so one of the goals is to model how the, the concentrations of these four species will evolve in function of the time. And that's why let's denote by x1 of t, x2 of t, and so on, the uh, uh, respective concentrations of the species, x1, x2, respectively, and so on. As I said last uh, during the second lecture, we use this uh, idea of Euclidean embedded graph. So now the uh, coefficients of the formal linear combination of species will be placed in uh, vectors. In uh, If we have for species here, vectors in R to the four. So here we have one, one, zero, zero for the first um, complex. And then um, for the second complex, zero, zero, one, zero, because we only have X3. And the third one is um, zero, 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 one. So first we see this graph, we see the network, we create, look at it as a graph. We can think of it as an as a Euclidean embedded graph, and then the vertices are uh, points in R4. Next, as I uh, was saying last uh, lecture, we work 
uh, under the assumption of mass action kinetics. So the law of mass action comes here into play. That's where graph theory and toric ideals uh, are especially uh, appearing uh, here in this uh, talk. So uh, this law is, I want to also say that it's very often uh, encountered in applications. So chemists, engineers usually work under this assumption, which is a, an approximation, let's say. It's, a, yes, to model, in order to, to model the, the what happens in, in reality. So under the law of mass action, you already saw last this week uh, several times, but here just to, to fix the notations, we write the uh, ODE system here for the concentrations of the species, x1, x2, x3, and x4, in function of time. So it is vectorial notation. Where I was um, showing uh, during the second lecture, you take, uh, so we have this graph under mass action kinetics. We have some um, labels on the reactions that give us the rate uh, of the pro of the proportionality in this assumption. So it's a positive real number, Kij. And you multiply for each reaction, you take its Kij, multiply with the monomial of the so um, to the power of the source vertex, and uh, multiply with the uh, difference of uh, target minus source that gives you the reaction vector. And if you do this for all the reactions, this is uh, how you obtain the system in a vectorial notation. If you want to write it as a normal uh, way of writing without two vectors, you just uh, identify the entries uh, here. So this is the evolution in time of the concentrations of the species in this network under mass action kinetics. And now, for a general case, let's um, say we have n species. <clears throat> we have m complexes, so m vertices. We give, we are given a reaction network. So the graph, the directed graph, uh, this set of parameters k and y, which is actually, uh, we look at it as a matrix with uh, each column being the vertex as, as it was here, y i, y one, y two, y three. Let's see on an example. So, what what is y? We we we'll see now. Okay. So if we have this um, way of writing, so once you are given the graph, if you have this way of writing compactly what I showed you before, k times the monomial times the differences of the source my um, target minus source. Let's, uh, if you try, you can try this uh, during the break. You can get uh, another way of writing actually uh, this uh, ODE system using this matrix of vertices. So uh, here it is for this example from above. If you check, you get Y times a matrix of Ks which will play an important role further in introducing the toric locus. These, these notations are uh, crucial in this talk. And um, here is the column vector of monomials taken from uh, x to the power yi okay, in multivariate notation. So you might wonder what is this matrix appearing here. Why? The, the matrix Y we know. I said this is taken with the columns of the vertices. The matrix phi of, we, we just denote it by phi of X hat. I mostly follow the notations from the paper from 2009 uh, that was given by uh, Grachun, uh, Dickenstein, Schu, and Sturfes. And then what happens with this matrix? If you look uh, more in detail, it actually has a lot to do with the graph, and uh, it is, as I already uh, gave here the, the information, it's the negative of the Laplacian of the graph. So the Laplacian of the graph, if uh, just to recall, if we have a graph with uh, that is weighted with, say, k hat, 
the Laplacian is defined as follows. So you have, it's a directed graph. Uh, if there's no edge uh, for the pair ij, if j towards i, there's, it's no, it's not in the edge set, you place a zero. You place the negative of the, of let's say, yes, of the weight k, j towards, on the reaction j towards i in the position ij. So that's why, that's a, a subtlety that we have uh, on line uh, i column j, we have k, j, i. And uh, with, uh, in our case, it's all negative. I didn't mention on the diagonal, we have, uh, we take the minus, we take uh, minus the sum of all the other edges so that the, that's by definition of the Laplacian, uh, the sum on all columns is zero. Of the edges in each column is zero. That's by definition. Here you can see the, if I equals J, you have the sum of all the other entries on the column. Okay, so this is a way, another way, and maybe you already saw this in uh, some previous lecture by Beatrice. Uh, I, I uh, want to use this notation because uh, you you see we can we can write in a compact form again the ODE system under mass action kinetics using these tools from linear algebra. So these matrix of the vertices, the inver the negative of the Laplacian and the column of monomials. And you can check the, if you think in terms of uh, species, number of species, number of vertices, namely number of co complexes, and uh, this um, m times one vector of monomials, one monomial for each vertex, we have m vertices. In the end, you get uh, the correct uh, sizes. So this is just a check. At home. So this was the first part where we just looked at the ODE system under mass action kinetics. Two ways of writing it, so it depends which one you prefer. So this is first section. Okay. Now we are heading towards uh, the second goal. Um, so towards understanding the toric locus, we might uh, ask why, why we care about it and it uh, actually answers or tries to answer in, in answers partly some questions, the toric locus and the disguised toric as well. And uh, let's see which are these questions. The questions regard the steady state solutions of the system. So we need to define what is a steady state solution. Uh, if you are given this dynamic, this ODE system as before, given by the graph, and okay, the right hand side, uh, if they if the polynomials in the right hand side have a common zero, this is called a steady state, uh, an equilibrium point, because it uh, makes all the concentrations to be constant. The derivatives are zero. And in an algebraic uh, way here, we say that this vector x is a steady state, if and only if, okay, of course, this right-hand side vanishes. And so we have this uh, equal to zero. Now we have uh, different ways of looking at the steady state uh, set. So either you consider it included in R to the n, so that it's a real algebraic variety, but so here I, I denote by curly V, calligraphic V steady state, the vanishing uh, set of the variety of this uh, ideal. This is a, a compact way of writing this. But actually the meaningful steady state variety is the positive, sorry, the non-negative uh, values of this. So we, we need to, in, in practice, to, to have a meaning uh, in a reaction network, usually, I mean, in, for instance, for concentrations and so on, we definitely need to take this semi-algebraic set, namely the variety of uh, from before, but intersected with the positive orthod in R to the N. So this is the notation for the uh, meaningful steady state variety. 
So first question about the steady state. Uh, the first question is how uh, how big is this? Uh, let's say like this uh, in a roughly way of explaining. How big is the steady state variety? The meaningful one. But uh, we need to think in terms of uh, up to stoichiometric uh, compatibility subspace, uh, compatibility class. So remember that uh, we had this uh, stoichiometric subspace. This is the sp subspace spanned by the reactions. And then uh, for each uh, X star, we can take its um, stoichiometric compatibility class. So in here, for instance, in this picture, we have S, just a sketch here uh, that you have seen already. Um, so we have the stoichiometric subspace S, and then we take uh, the corresponding stoichiometric compatibility class. So that is X uh, star. Once you have one, uh, um, one uh, equilibrium X star, consider S star plus this subspace and uh, take the intersection with uh, the positive one. This is what we denote by S star. And this is the, the stoichiometric compatibility class uh, associated to X star, to our equilibrium. And th th that's now uh, the question, uh, how, um, let's say, how many points do we have at the intersection of the uh, steady state variety meaningful one with this stoichiometric compatibility class. In this example, for instance, it varies for some uh, X stars. So in, in this uh, case, in this picture, we have three intersection points and in uh, some other cases, uh, in other S stars, okay, we have just one. And this is a, a question that is uh, usually important in this field. Translated in terms of uh, reaction networks, we have either multistationarity or monostationarity. So we have uh, what is multistationarity? There is some stoichiometric compatibility class where we have more than one intersection point between this green variety, the steady state uh, variety, and the class. And monostationarity says that for all uh, stoichiometric compatibility classes, these uh, red uh, segments here, we have at most at most one uh, intersection point. In my talk, we, uh, uh, we are going to, to, to uh, so both today and the next uh, talks, we focus mostly on monostationarity. We, we, so that's what storing dynamic systems are, are about. And also uh, due to the theorem by Horn and Jackson I that I mentioned uh, in lecture two, we also focus on the second question here that I didn't state yet. So the second question, so given, uh, this is given X star in the steady state variety, meaningful steady state variety. Now the question says, is it a locally attracting uh, equilibrium point? In other words, if x0, so when you start the starting point in your stoichiometric compatibility class, so on a segment here, is close to your uh, equilibrium, do you do you have that x uh, ten, tends to this equilibrium, approaches this point uh, when time goes to infinity? Well, there is also the third question that is, in case the steady state variety this meaningful one, so the uh, locus of equilibria in your um, given by your network, um, sorry, given by um, yes, by your network. Okay, so if this uh, steady state set gives exactly as an intersection with the stoichiometric compatibility class one point, so if you have this situation, we can ask: Is this point globally attractive? So not only for close points, uh, we have that they reach uh, at some, uh, as time goes to infinity, x star. So any okay, um, 
not only for close, not only if you start close to X star, but uh, no matter where you start with uh, X zero in the compatibility class, you will eventually reach this uh, equilibrium. Okay, now this will be related to the global attractor conjecture, but uh, for now I won't talk about that. So this was the part where I was motivating why we care about, uh, why, why we will care about some sets we are working with, namely the toric locus, and so next the disguised toric. And uh, as I promised last time, uh, I will explain more precisely these complex balanced networks. Um, I, I, I said last quickly some definition, but now since we have these notations, we can see more, more, uh, more clearly. So given a graph, we have a graph, M of vertices, uh, yes, or M of vertices with E, we denote the edges, and we have the weighted graph, it's a directed graph, weighted with the parameters K. Since we are in the mass action kinetics setting, we have always, we, we, so we always have these uh, weighted uh, parameters on the edges. So we, if we suppose that at each uh, vertex of your graph, there is some quantity that uh, flows along the directed edges, we can talk about the inflow of a vertex. So all the flows that go in, inside that vertex from the edges, sorry, from the reactions that uh, uh, reach it. And we also have the outflow. And the, by definition, you will have uh, so it, it is, uh, you see, multiplied. So this quantity needs to be multiplied by the parameter. Right? This is the reaction rate constant. Sometimes these are called reaction rate constants, but for us, this Kij, but for us, uh, that we treat them symbolically, we uh, see, them, see them as parameter, parameters. In any case, it's a balanced system if and only if, by definition, the, at every vertex, as I was saying with the Kirchhoff junction rule, inflow equals outflow, so it's balanced. And if you look um, algebraically, actually this can be written, you have the Laplacian, uh, sorry, the, the matrix coming from the negative of the Laplacian times these quantities equals zero. So it's, this is the rigorous way of writing it. Why do we need this? So this was just what it means to be a balanced system, but we need this definition of complex balanced. So again, given a network, uh, G, K, G together with the parameters and the vertices, Y, the vectors from the vertices, by definition, uh, a steady state, X star, we say it's complex balanced, uh, as I said last time, for vertex balance, complex balance because the complexes are the vertices, if we have actually uh, AK multiplied by this uh, vector of monomials that I introduced before equals uh, zero. So instead, the quantities will be these ones here. So this is again uh, important to remember this way of they're defining the complex balance. Actually, uh, the whole story about toric, this guy's toric is based on complex balancing. Now you see uh, that uh, a complex uh, balanced state is obviously a steady state because uh, of the definition of steady states, where we had y times ak times phi of x star equals zero. So if ak times phi of x star is zero, it's a steady state x, x star here. Now, um, I want to say um, that we work with networks. So when I say network, we always think of graphs. And I will, um, I will need always to keep in mind, we need to, that's a, a very delicate point. Uh, 
for for a while now we focus on um, this property but associated to the graph maybe we'll see soon what i mean <clears throat> so if you're given a network so this graph gky and if it has a positive complex balanced steady state x star positive here is important uh, I, I don't, yeah, you can, we can discuss later, but it needs to be positive. So if it has a positive complex balance steady state, so a steady state that satisfies these equations from this definition above, we say that the network is complex balanced. So the whole network is complex balanced. Once it has a positive steady state, that is complex balanced. And why we can say that? Uh, this is due to this theorem. to uh, now I think it's it's useful to to remind you there is this theorem by Horn and Jackson in 1972 in the you can read about it in uh, their paper general mass action kinetics mm -hmm. and this is the general mass action kinetics okay, here is the paper uh, that motivates the, the our in network by definition it has one positive complex balance steady state at least one then so that's our hypothesis then we have three conclusions so actually having one positive state uh, steady state that is complex balance has a very nice consequence for the network the first, uh, the first con consequence is that the network is weakly reversible. So this means that every connected component is strongly connected. Or uh, you can think every directed arrow is part of a, of a directed cycle. But from the dynamics point of view, now B and C here, the properties that we have are um, more important. Yes. Okay. So let me see the definition. Okay. Uh, every positive stoichiometric compatibility class has a unique positive steady state. So let's see the picture. So once you know that the network has a, com um, a complex balance positive steady state, uh, by the theorem of Horn and Jackson, you know that every positive stoichiometric compatibility class, so these blue segments here in this sketch, have a unique positive steady state. And even more interesting that every positive steady state is complex balanced now and locally attracting. So we have uh, local uh, stability within that uh, stoichiometric compatibility class. So as you say, see here with the arrows, I sketched a bit this, uh, when you're close to your uh, equilibrium, you are attracted to it. That's the local stability that is proven by Horn and Jackson. So if you have a network that has a, complex, a positive complex balance steady state, you know that all the steady states, positive steady states are complex balanced. And they're all locally attracting, and there there is exactly one uh, for each stoichiometric compatibility class. This was in the fundamental work by Horn and Jackson. Foundational work by Horn and Jackson. You can check the proof here or in these references one, two, and three that I mentioned before, or proof ideas. Uh, I just say here briefly. Uh, that there is also this um, global attractor conjecture. So initially they believe that uh, their proof implies globally attracting, but uh, it was not true. And uh, maybe if we have time next lectures, we can discuss otherwise. I can give you the, some references about this, but uh, for now it is open. This is one of the most important problems in chemical reaction network theory. The global attractor conjecture. Actually, a, a, a solution has been proposed recently, so by Gheorghe Crăciun. 
and uh, in many cases uh, there are proofs for several hypotheses in some dimensions and so on. Uh, we 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 won't uh, for now we, we we don't talk about it. So that's the takeaway. Uh, so maybe not, not not as a conclusion, but I want to say that one important message that I want to to over to underline and to emphasize very important. Uh, that uh, is the key of the whole talk and the lecture. I, I, I think it's uh, very important uh, for these lectures. Uh, that the existence of a positive complex balanced steady state may depend on the reaction rates k on the parameters. We sometimes they are called uh, we 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 say they are parameters. Okay, the weights on the graph. Actually, this is based on a question I received uh, two days ago, and we'll see an example now why I'm saying this. And maybe during the tutorial, we can compute more. I didn't do a tutorial now because there were too many notations I, I had in mind, and uh, I thought it's easier to, to, to postpone the tutorial, and then it will be more clear with this uh, talk. So the existence of a positive complex balanced steady state may depend on the reaction rates. And keep in mind that once you have uh, uh, the existence of such a steady state so by Horn and Jackson, uh, the whole dynamics of the of these systems are is very nice. But the existence of one now uh, depends on the on the rates. And you uh, you can look at this example. It's an example that was given by Feinberg. Uh, you can see uh, more details in his lectures, two and three, from the references before. You can find them on online. You can also check uh, Koch's uh, book, this uh, reference number three here. So what, what does this example show us? It's a network. Okay. It has three species, A, B, and C. We have one, two, three, four, five complexes. It comes from biochemistry. Uh, it's called Edelstein. Or I, I also I wrote Edelstein Feinberg. It's an adaptation of uh, Edelstein network. But what is the goal of this example? Uh, with this example, we see that starting from a reaction network, so from this graph. We find that there are different dynamical behaviors in function of this k, in function of the parameters k. And as an exercise, maybe from for the tutorial class that we do, when we have this equation, algebraic equation, in the parameters kij, we know that there is a unique steady state in each positive compatibility class. So this is uh, actually that you can think of it already in terms of the Tori locus. Is the Tori locus of this network? Uh, this this uh, the variety given by this equation. Of course, intersected with a positive order, uh, we only care about parameters that are uh, positive. Okay, but when you when your parameter lies on this variety given by this equation, you know that um, there is a unique steady state in each positive geometric compatibility class. But when you are not on this variety, so let's you if you pick a point, a vector k that has, for instance, these values given by Feinberg, so for a different k, not satisfying these equations, you find that the number of steady states is varying. So here in this picture, you see, we have, uh, this is an example, as I told you by Feinberg, it has a stoichiometric, it has stoichiometric compatibility classes that are unbounded. And uh, here in green, we have a sketch of the steady state variety, uh, the meaningful one. Moreover, uh, I placed dots whenever 
the steady state variety intersects a stoichiometric compatibility class, the green stoichiometric compatibility class, according to Feinberg's computation uh, that I didn't show here. And um, um, so this is a, a, an actually a steady state in the green stoichiometric compatibility class, whereas in the pink stoichiometric compatibility class, we have three such steady states. So we we vary, uh, and this this is what I meant by this uh, remark that uh, in function of the reaction rates, we might have or not a positive complex balance steady state, and that's the key uh, point in. And the goal, what motivates the whole, uh, what, what justifies the whole uh, work on toric and disguised toric logs. And not only, I mean, now this is what we, we look at. And there are, of course, uh, many other works, uh, like uh, Beatrice will talk uh, about, uh, about multi stationarity, I believe, and so on. But I, I don't, uh, I just talk about uh, this. Um, in my lectures. So finally, I think now we are ready to, to understand uh, what I mean by toric dynamical systems. So as I was saying in the num in the paper number four by Krachun, Dickenstein, Shiu, and Sturmfels, uh, Based on this work by, on complex balance, they were thinking to name these systems toric dynamical systems. And it has a reason for that, later we'll see. Just that, um, what I prefer is to say during this lecture, to work mostly with complex balance reaction methods, this terminology. But actually, it is interchangeable with toric dynamical system. But in the next lecture with this guy's story, uh, I will make a difference uh, between network and system. And I wrote here in, in uh, violet. It's, um, it's due to, this is due to the, to the notion of dynamical equivalence that I, I don't uh, talk today about too much. But essentially, the key point is that uh, a dynamical system, and I think you, there was an exercise in the tutorial yesterday, uh, that the same dynamical system can be generated by different reaction networks. So once you fix, once you pick a reaction network you work with that generates your system, you can deduce using this whole theory of toric dynamical systems, you can deduce some of the of the properties of the dynamical properties. And that's the whole point that I will talk about in the next lecture. Um, the fact that this guy's story locus is based exactly in finding a different network, generating the same system, uh, but the new network um, hopefully having nicer combinatories, nicer properties, nicer, uh, a better shape, let's say. So that's why we keep in mind that for now we think of the network. What what does the network tell us in terms of this dynamics of the <laughs> complex balanced steady states? Okay, so uh, we say a complex balanced reaction network. Recall what I mean again by a complex balanced reaction network. It's a positive. Uh, it's uh, by definition there exist um, there exists a positive steady state x star, this vector of concentrations, that verifies these uh, e equations. So we had the negative of the Laplacian, ak, multiplied by the vector of monomials, x star, that is uh, the vector of uh, x to the power yi, where, so x to the vertices, these monomials. So, you see, uh, the definition definitely depends on the network because here is the Laplace, the negative of the Laplacian. So it depends on the graph. So the network, when I say network, I always think about the graph. So network uh, is a graph. Uh, 
I'm not saying that the network is a system because the system, the dynamical system can come from a different network. So uh, whenever I say here network, I'm thinking about the underlying graph behind. So this uh, definition definitely is depending on the graph. Uh, good. This uh, next lecture with Tor uh, when I talk about this guy story, I'll uh, explain more detailed what I mean. And we'll also do some exercises and uh, see better what what happens. Uh, let's go back to examples. Uh, the goal now in this section, section uh, four. In, in my talk is the main goal of the talk. As I said, to see what, how to get the disguise, sorry, how to get the, to the toric locus of a network. How to get the toric locus. And if we look at this network, this network has three complexes, one, two, three. It has only two species, which is good, we can think uh, in the plane, and uh, it has six reaction uh, vectors, edges, directed edges, that are decorated with six positive uh, parameters, k, i, j. And um, we can say this is the, the graph, the complete directed graph on three vertices. Complete directed graph on three vertices. It will appear also in the next, in my next Talk or in the lecture, this uh, this network. Um, so it's uh, it's important to keep in mind this network. And for this network, let's say for which parameters k six parameters positive ones is the network complex balanced. So for which parameters k is this network complex balanced? So we, if we start writing the negative of the Laplacian, we have, um, you see, um, line on each, so we have line uh, line one, column two, and here we replace K2 on. Remember, it's uh, by definition of the Laplacian. And uh, you see, by definition, the columns uh, sum up to zero. Again, so uh, you place on the diagonal the, the, the negative sum of the all the other entries that you place from the graph. And now an exercise that uh, one can do by hand, or if you want to try Macaulay too, you can uh, check what is the kernel of this matrix. And I guess you already. Uh, guess uh, why we, we care about it, because we have this re relation that is satisfied in order to be complex balanced. So what is the kernel of AK in this uh, example? So the kernel turns out that it's um, here given by uh, its span. So the kernel is span by this vector K1, K2, K3. So notice uh, here there are some capital Ks appearing. Uh, okay, this uh, we can transpose. Where um, um, here we have the expressions in terms of the parameters, small Ks of this capital case. So here uh, we are going towards uh, finding, here, you know, just um, giving a, uh, an idea, this uh, K1, capital K1, capital K2, capital K3 will be the variables that uh, appear in the binomials from the toric ideal that we care about. But we don't know yet why, we'll see now. So uh, you, we need to always keep in mind what is small k and uh, I mean, to not uh, make this confusion, small k, capital K, starting from now. I'm following the notations from the paper uh, by Krachun, Dickenstein, Shi, and Sturmfels here. So, um, okay, we can compute this by hand with Macaulay too, but uh, actually, uh, and this is a, a, a specific case of a combinatorial nice theorem that is 
the so-called like the, the well-known matrix tree theorem. You can read more about it in these references, for instance. But uh, what does it say? So essentially, it's a very nice way to make this change of variables that give we will, will lead us to the toric ideal. And this is based on spanning trees on the graph. So we have the complete directive graph here. And in order to find this K1, for example, what do we do in terms of this Kij? We look at all the, so say the vertex one is up here, x1 plus x1. We take all the spanning trees in the network that have that uh, lead to vertex one. If we want to compute K, capital K1, then we uh, look at um, spanning trees with a sink at K1. Yeah, sorry, with the sink at one. In this case, we have three of them. It was a, by a directed uh, complete graph. So we have all these possibilities. And if you take uh, then the product of the weights on the graph, we get, and you sum them all up, you end up with the expression of K1. And this is very nice because it's directly combinatorially easy to uh, get the this kernel and uh, to to find also the change of variables we will need later. Same for K2 and K3 and so on. So this was uh, the part where starting with the network and taking its uh, matrix AK, so the negative of the Laplacian, in order to find this kernel, okay, uh, the ve uh, what vector spans the kernel of this matrix, use the uh, matrix tree theorem. And in this special particular case, find all the spanning trees having a certain sink in your network, one of the three vertices. So you take one by one the vertices and each of them will have three spanning trees. And those will be K1, K2, and K3. Mm -hmm. No, essentially with this example, I will uh, show how to get the toric locus concretely. Mm, but at the same time, we also see the notations that appear in the uh, paper by Krachun, Dickenstein, Shiu, and uh, Sturmfels. So that uh, it uh, now next it will be easier if you want to read the um, paper, you can think of this example, have it in mind, and uh, then read the proof. Because uh, for the proof, I I will not have enough time to 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 talk about much much about the proof for now. But of the proof that the that the ideal that we will find, uh, as I was saying, is toric. So what we did right now, we just found the tori the kernel of the matrix A. So next, um, what is the goal next is to prove the whole uh, for this network that X star, this vector is uh, a complex balanced positive steady state. So in, in a, in a reg rigorous uh, terms, is positive and satisfies this complex balancing equations. And we will show now that um, it is uh, positive and complex balanced if and only if we have this equality. K, capital K1, capital K3 equals capital K2 squared. So here it will be it will consist of two parts necessity necessity and uh, sufficiency. Um, so it's it will be an if and only if. And that's the goal because next we will see that uh, what we call um, what what they called the mo uh, toric moduli, uh, what they call the toric locus of the network 
is given by the uh, by the variety that is uh, the variety associated to this ideal to the ideal generated by k1 k3 equal uh, minus k2 square so you see in uh, in this whole example we can see how to make the change of variables to get the binomial and how to um, also how to um, characterize when x star is complex balanced positive steady state so uh, to to go a bit uh, quickly here the kernel of the matrix i said is spanned by this vector we know that by definition here phi of x star is in the kernel so we can write that the the, the monomial vector here phi of x star is a multiple of uh, this vector as i said being in the kernel this makes uh, makes us get three equations in terms of lambda note that lambda is uh, is positive because we only care about x star being positive we cannot allow x star to be zero we only work with the positive steady state here and if we eliminate lambda you can make this very easily uh, in your head you see already that k1 k3 capital k1 k3 is capital 2 squared so for now we proved that x star is positive complex balanced steady state for our network uh, if if this happens you get this equality it just uh, in a minute we'll see also that actually uh, this equality is uh, not only necessary but also sufficient for x star to be a positive complex balanced steady state so we will have characterized the uh, all the positive steady complex balanced steady state of this network but let's make a bit of uh, elimination theory so we have uh, let's see what this idea of r, the idea generated by the string equations given by the fact that it lies in the kernel of the matrix, this x star, phi of z f star. And uh, as I said, we eliminate lambda, okay, eliminate lambda. But if you eliminate lambda, actually, you can, uh, if you try this in Macaulay 2, you get this uh, idea. So you can uh, do this. Uh, at home and uh, or uh, after the lecture okay we have this uh, ideal it has you see the, there are these binomials uh, it's an ideal in uh, the polynomial ring uh, with variables x1 x2 k1 k2 k3 capital k but we only have x uh, we only want x star to be a positive uh, steady state so both their entries must be positive this leads us so to, we need then to saturate this. So we want to saturate this idea with this uh, x1, x2, and this. We, we want to to not have um, to, so, to to satisfy this property. And once you try this again with Macaulay 2, I didn't uh, show now, you get three these three express these three polynomials. Three polynomials. They are binomial. And you see that in the first one, uh, we don't have the variable x. And then by elimination theory, again, you do again elimination. And uh, you, here you notice directly that intersecting with the, the polynomial ring in k1, k2, k3. Uh, here, OK, we need to justify that it's a polynomial ring. Uh, you can read this in the paper by Gretchen, uh, Dickenstein, uh, Schuh, and Sturm first that k1 k2 k3 and in general these capital k's are uh, algebraically independent uh, okay we end up with a new uh, a new ideal this is the ideal just in uh, the capital k variables k2 uh, squared minus k1 k3 is the gen generated by this polynomial so uh, here again for a proof uh, again, in the paper, in their paper, you can check the proof that both this TJ, uh, sorry, TG, and the uh, one, sorry, the moduli ideal MG, they call it moduli ideal, 
are Toric ideals. That's the, the, the motivation for this title, Toric, Locus, and, and so on. But this, uh, in the interest of time, I will not uh, talk about Toric, uh, the, the proof for now. Okay, and now I want to recall the fact that by the spanning tree, the trees, uh, so the matrix tree theorem, and just, okay, the notation we have, actually in the Kij parameters, uh, the characterization uh, is uh, given by this uh, longer and more complicated, more involved uh, equation that is not toric. So the toric uh, emerges, the, prop the toric uh, aspects, come into play only after the change of variables. And as it, it's mentioned uh, also in uh, the book uh, by Cox, and also you can find in the book of nonlinear algebra, invitation to nonlinear algebra, this happens also in algebraic statistics. And you, you can read some examples of this there. So the, the, uh, the, some touristy appears only after a change of variables. But uh, if you're lucky to find the good change of variables, then you end up with binomials. And I need uh, maybe, if I, I think I still have uh, some minutes. Uh, just I want to say that uh, we need also to show, we only showed here that um, we have the uh, necessity, but we also can, we can also prove that uh, this equality here is um, sufficient for for x star to be complex balanced steady state. How do we show this on our concrete example? So let's say now, uh, so we start from right to left. We suppose that uh, our parameters satisfy this equation that I showed here. It's quite involved here. Right? And uh, recall that the ah, no here we can uh, check you can check that the stoichiometric subspace in this network is spanned by this vector you can check by taking uh, by looking at the the vertices of uh, your network of, of our network so this means by this uh, relation that uh, uh, the stoichiometric subspace the equation of the stoichiometric subspace is just x1 plus x2 equals 0. So now if you start with, uh, if you look in the compatibility class, well, x1 plus x2 equals c, so you translate with some positive c, uh, you can find uh, inside it uh, such an x star of this shape that uh, lies there. Okay, by its definition, x1 plus x2 equals c. So this satisfies. Okay, but <clears throat> we know that um, we we know then that let me just check that uh, from so from this uh, shape of x star from the say, shape of x star on the compatibility class that we fixed, you can see that uh, here. Uh, K2 multiplied by its first entry equals K1 multiplied by its second entry, just by these equations. And now uh, multiplying by uh, K2, you end up uh, with some other relation, but because we take into account exactly that uh, K2 squared equals K1, K3 is true. And you end up having this new uh, binomial. But this binomial is uh, in TG. Uh, here is a, I don't uh, justify this, but uh, okay. Using some, some more theory from the paper here, you, you, you need to, to do some other proposition, but from here you end up uh, concluding using that some proposition in the paper that it is indeed, the, the network is complex balance for, uh, and sorry, that X star is a complex balanced steady state. So we proved also the other implication. And uh, now I showed you an example, but this can all be shown also uh, really uh, for the general case. So in a general graph with M vertices, you define uh, the, um, again, this ideal that comes from the complex balancing equation where you saturate these uh, concentrations because you want positive steady states. 
complex unsteady states. And then um, there is a proposition saying that the uh, this this ideal satisfy uh, is the ideal of the complex balance variety, steady state variety. Moreover, again, you have this TG that we had before uh, by doing some. And then finally, in a general scenario, uh, se uh, eliminating um, the concentrations from TG, so intersecting with the polynomial ring in the capital K variables, you end up with a toric ideal. And this is the proven in, uh, in, in four. And just one uh, remark. Uh, this is the toric uh, locus of a reaction network theorem. So if you assume G is weakly reversible, fix uh, K star positive uh, vector. Uh, then we have the equivalence that the network satisfies the complex balance condition if and only if this capital K star coming from our fixed capital star is in the variety uh, of the ideal MG. And this is the ideal that we saw before, given by that binomial. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. I had uh, some more just to say that the next lecture is uh, about disguised storic dynamical systems that takes into account that a system can be generated by different networks. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions or comments? Could you um, scroll up to the um, uh, Feinberg um, network? I just had a question about something there. Yeah, right there. Uh, yeah, thank you. So uh, when you define this stoichiometric equivalence, you mentioned it was going to be spanned by something or it's going to be a subspace, right? I just was confused about ah, this uh, Okay. polyhedron. Thank you very much for uh, the question. I Indeed, I didn't mention, I forgot, uh, I, maybe I thought I mentioned the last time, uh, the stoi and this very important notion, the stoichiometric uh, um, subspace, indeed, uh, is the, maybe, I, so here it's, maybe I show first on the other example, I don't know if I have it maybe above. Uh, here. It is so S is a subspace, okay, and it's spanned by the reaction uh, vectors. So by the edges of your graph. You can think of the graph, as I said last time, is embedded in the plane in the Euclidean space, and you have these uh, reactions that are the vectors appearing in the in the Euclidean space. Look at the space the subspace spanned by the reactions. That is S. That is the stoichiometric uh, uh, subspace. And then, uh, I didn't write, uh, thought I wrote this. This was okay, but then uh, here, here. when we have the polyhedron, this is not a uh, subspace of the... No, exactly, yes. So maybe I, I show uh, in a smaller uh, dimension here. And then we go, uh, so once we uh, uh, clarified what is S, right, the subspace, then uh, for each X star that you pick, um, pick, uh, pick some point, you can find some point on the, on the steady state locus, you can uh, find its stoichiometric uh, compatibility class. Actually, this is, you translate S, so that uh, it lies on, so that X star, okay, is on, on, on it. So it's X star plus S, but you take the intersection with the positive orton. So it's usually uh, gives a polyhedron. And in this example, where it is, it was uh, unbounded. I didn't show the the computations actually. This is uh, computed in the book. And um, that, does this make sense? So, and here you have 
one of the one of the translations of this subspace, this green one, is star for some values from for some initial values of your system. So the initial values actually give you the the, the stoichiometric compatibility class, and the pink one is another one, another uh, stoichiometric compatibility class. And the trajectories, once you start in such a stoichiometric compatibility class, remain inside the stoichiometric compatibility class. It's um, these are also called invariant polyhedra for the trajectories. Yeah. So when you start in a polyhedron like that, your trajectory, it, it, this is proven in some references, uh, stays inside that um, that polyhedron. That's uh, important. OK, that helps. Thank you. Thank you for the question. OK, is there any question from IBA? No question. Okay, thank you. So let's thank the speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have a lunch break, but at 2.30 or afternoon, in the afternoon session, we have two sessions about the problem sessions and research. Problem session, so I will request all the speakers to post some problems or conjectures with along with the some references and uh, i also uh, request the participants please participate in those sessions and so be there in the afternoon session because of uh, like juma prayer can can we extend this break uh, till uh, to uh, half hour more like uh, about 2 30. so maybe we can start at three yeah Okay, so so please we will start at three. Uh, uh, IBA Krachi as well and uh, Stefana as well. It, 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 is it fine for you to be here at three to just pose some problems? At three? Yes, at three Pakistan. Uh, I will be there. I will be there. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we will meet at at uh, three p.m. IBA Krachi. Is, is is it fine for you as well? Yes. Uh, yes. Actually. Okay. We will. Uh, in my okay. Personal capacity. Okay. Is it fine at three? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's great. So see you all at three.